Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Talk. Fans, Real Talk.com. Well, Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend it. Hello, everyone. Mark the Stat Man, Skevich, Real Fans, Real Talk, in association with the RTS Spotlight. Here with Brownsville, Brooklyn's own Zab Judah. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Great to have you. Before we get into your long, illustrious boxing career, let's talk about today, how you're giving back to the community, giving out turkeys to the community. How did you get involved? Um, this is a program, something that we've been doing for the last 10 years. We go around every Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, New Year's, uh, Halloween, etc., etc. And we, um, you know, I'm born and raised in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Um, a poverty struggling kid, grew up in the projects. And, I, and so this, this is why every year we pick a different projects and go out there and give our turkey because, you know, yeah, we grew up poor and everything like that. Some some Thanksgiving we ain't had no turkey, but you know what? You know what I'm saying? Like now that God has blessed us with the opportunity, I feel like it's time for me to go back and give back. You know what I mean? So we, we picked Brevoy this year and uh, we came out here and had an excellent day today. Yeah. Now this building happens to be a senior center. You also help with... Uh the elderly suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, I'm also a certified nurse. I'm a CNA. And, um, you know, just, just another title to show, to show people in the world that, um, you know, greatness is, 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 is what you make it. You know what I'm saying? You could be great at whatever, how, whatever you believe in yourself as. You know what I mean? Like, don't let nobody tell you what you could do or what you can't do. You know what I mean? Like, believe in yourself and go out there and work hard. Like, people tell me, that I can never be a nurse. You know, I, I really wanted to be a doctor, you know what I'm saying? But I know going to school for a doctor right now is a long time, right? I don't think I got enough time right now, you know? You're still young? Right. I, I, yeah. <laughs> so, but what I said was I wanted to go to school, get my nursing license, and now I got my nursing license. Six-time champion of the world, last undisputed champion of the world. And I'm moving on. I'm still doing more. I'm still doing more. Than I got a big surprise coming out in the medical field that I'm doing right now, people are going to be really shocked about. It's, going to, it's, it's really cool. Though. Now, what made you decide to do that after boxing? Um, I, had a, I had a girlfriend, and um, she was a nurse, and um, she inspired me. You know, you know, like I said, I always wanted to be a doctor, so she inspired me with, like, you know, like being a doctor right now is going to be a long time, so I want you to go ahead and, you know, because I have compassion, I love people, I love older people, you know what I'm saying? And working with patients with, them, with, them, with uh, dementia was... That was something different, you know what I mean? I mean, that, that was something that, that's something that you got to do with your heart. You got to do that with, your, with the love of your heart because, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, it's not a, um, it's a very rewarding situation to the person itself when you see how you help a person maintain themselves and help them, you know, because people with dementia, they don't have a lot of um, ability to do for themselves. So when you're stepping in there and you're helping the people and, and you see, like you can see where they need help at and you're helping them and you see them actually get by the task that you help them with, you feel good about yourself. Now, boxing obviously, football as well, head injuries, you're dealing with dementia, Alzheimer's. Do you have, you started boxing at the age of six. Do you have any fear uh, of that happening to you in the future? Well, I mean, there's always a, a fear of a chance of being, you know, discombobulated. But I figure myself from fighting at the age of six years old, and I ain't afraid to tell you, I'm 41 years old. I just turned 41 years old the other day. And um, for 41 years old right now, I feel like I speak well, I think well, you know what I'm saying? I, I maneuver for myself, you know what I'm saying? I handle myself out here in these streets pretty well. And um, I thank God for that opportunity. I thank God for that situation that I'm in right now with having a 24-year boxing career. Now, again, starting at six years old, what would you say to parents who might be a little concerned about letting their kids play, uh, bo or, you know, play uh, football or get into boxing or anything like that? Well, I would tell parents when it comes out of boxing, this I experienced it. Never push your kids into fighting. Let them come to you and say, "Mom, Dad, I want to fight." Once they go in the gym and they start fighting, you know what I'm saying, go in there and watch them. Go in there and watch them and see what they're picking up on. I tell everybody, day one, if your children and your family and your kids are not moving their head with the defense, get them out of it. Defense is the number one thing. Remember, you got to remember, it goes back to the science of what the game is. The game is to hit and not be hit. Not, I hate you, you hit me, I hate you, you hit No, that's not. I like a Rocky movie. Right, it's, not, it's not a Rocky movie. In real life, kids, move your head. 
You'll be around for a long time. Looking for it, Mayweather. Look at Sugar Ray Leonard. Look at, you know, you know what I'm saying. I mean, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. The 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 greats. They move their heads. Now, Lee. You know what I mean? Now, speaking of uh, defense and Floyd Mayweather, you happen to be in the ring against Floyd Mayweather, obviously the most famous fighter that you fought. How hard was it to hit him? Um, no, um, I mean, it was a very, I mean, it was, it was an 06, man. It was, it was a very competitive, fun fight, you know what I'm saying? We had a lot of fun. We made history. It's 2018, and people still asking that question. So what you think? <laughs> it must have been good. <laughs> what, what, uh... Would you say he's the greatest defensive fighter of all time, or? Yeah, he's the he's the greatest defensive fighter out here of our generation today. Um, he is, you know, probably one of the hardest working boxers that I've ever seen work boxing. You know what I'm saying? I've had a chance to fight him. I've had a chance to be friends with him. I got a chance to chill with him. You know what I'm saying? And train with him. And um, you know what I'm saying? And and, and you know, you observe those things as you work with Floyd. Floyd is a hard worker. Floyd believes in. Working hard so that he he don't want to leave nothing outside. No, all T's crossed and I's dotted. So fight night. That's why he come out flawless. Got a lot of big fights in your day. Who would you say is the hardest hitting fighter that you've ever been in the ring with? Lucas Matiste. Okay. You fought in a lot of different venues. You fought in Vegas. You fought in New York. You fought uh, in an outdoor stadium in the rain. A lot of big memories. You're from Brooklyn, so you had the pleasure of fighting in the Barclays Center and Madison Square Garden. Where would you say is what would you say is the best venue that you've ever fought in? I mean, of course, Barclays. You know, because it's, it's hometown. You know, what I'm saying when you're coming out, I'm seeing peers, I'm seeing friends, I'm seeing family, I'm seeing people that I grew up with, with the high school, with junior high school, with first grade, kindergarten. You know, what I'm saying like, um, you know, one of my friends, Taji, me and her. You know, what I'm saying she, me and her, with the first grade together, no kindergarten together, and she, when I when I was coming out to the aisle, I, I look right at her, I was like, wow, like you know what I mean, like that gave me. You know, that gave me um, comfortability to say that, you know, outside of the ring, you, you got a lot of love here. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is go inside this ring and perform to the best of your ability, and everything else going to be, um, you know what I'm saying, written from there. Your last fight wasn't that long ago. Yeah, yeah. Less than a year ago. Are you planning on fighting again in the future? 100%. 20, 2019, Zab Judah will be back in the ring. Just going to go back in there. Exercise my right to whip ass. Now, have you have you thought about retiring, or do you know have any idea of a time frame or when you think you'll retire? I mean, I think that the moment you start to plan and think about retirement, that means that it's it's, it's it's nowhere in the near future right now. It's safe to say that it's over when you start planning those type of things. I mean, me, I'm just looking to keep um, taking down um, history chapters. Um, doing the doing the impossible, making it making the impossible possible, and just breaking records. Definitely. Now, when you're not in the ring, do you, do you miss it? Like when you take a long break, are you like anxious to get back in the ring? I, of course. All of my friends, all of my friends and family know that. You know, you leave Zab out of the ring too much, he start punching on people. He start punching on my, you know, I was like I be shadow boxing with my daughters and. <laughs> And my and, and my son and even my mom, you know what I'm saying. Me and my dad still, you know, we do pads together. So I'm, you know, here to tell you, Zab has a love and a passion for always going to the gym and working hard, and it's just a part of me. Something that you know, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, people always say, "What are you gonna do after boxing?" I'm just like, I ain't thought about that. I just wanna have fun and enjoy life, man. That's it. Now you started your professional career at the eight, young age of 18. What type of advice would you have for young up and coming fighters? Work hard, stay focused, believe in your dreams, put your best foot forward, don't play with nobody. Again, going back to age six, what age did you realize that this is what you wanted to do professionally for, for life? At, 40, at, at 41, I, I, I thought about this yesterday, and I said, you know what, I love this boxing sport, and I, you know what, I'm going to keep continuing doing it until I'm finished. So it took me 41 years to figure out that I really wanted to be a boxer. <laughs> All these other years, you were just doing it to pass time. I was, I was just passing time. It was um something that was great to me, but you know now I decided that you know I really want to be a boxer. I want to go out there and become seven-time champ of the world. And I know me and everybody that know me. Once I put my mind to something, I will I will get it done. Definitely. Once you put your mind to something, you can definitely get it done. Mark the Statman Skevich here with Zab Judah. 
I'm here with Real Fans Real Talk and RTS Spotlight, and we'll see you next Wait, time. Tell them again. We in, Ma we in Brevoid Projects right now. This is live right here, guys. I just want to alliterate that. Yeah. Definitely. This is Vin Baker. You watching Real Fans Real Talk. RealFansRealTalk.com Where well, Arthur Diamond Trip Young and intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats, man If you're not tuned in I recommend the cat